in line, we have a panel discussion today. And as updated in WhatsApp also, Nikhanta say we decided this meeting will be more on human resource, right? In fact, on the model model meeting, where the one the Q and A catered to Kerala, what are the topics that they wish to listen about Kerala? People like especially on Kasi Raja sir and few other people, in that we are doing man power management, that very much needed. All the photos are already there, and remunerate from the customer, and when they grow up into it, it becomes difficult to really. Manage the talent pool, and there's a lot of challenges no matter what. So today we have a panel of uh, people to be here, and uh, the first in line is Mr. Anand. On uh, sir, bang the number one. Anand the text section, Julie Madurai, like he has his text section level. So, so uh, text section faculty, you know, in the world it has got a lot of laborers, right? So on the laborers, how do they manage in the world? He is here to share his experience and probably throw some light in that particular industry line. Next we have Mr. Lakshman and sir uh, from Pharma Fabrica and I believe for the total staff force in this industry is close to 400 plus and 300 plus, 300 plus and uh, no where I manage for me and the industry grow for me and definitely uh, we, uh, we have a lot to learn from the people and you can come to the center and we have and the next in line we have uh, Dr. Shanti Mutraman and uh, a professional but running a software chain while you know, they are growing from 10 to 10. And they are in the two zone up under the one thing. It, is, it has become a brand. It is establishing various places. In fact, when you make a visit to their uh, clinic, a clinic is a showroom on the three. So it is a difficult product for us, but it is not a real level. So here they are seeing the face of it. And uh, they, they are actually building a new kind of a platform as such. In general, doctors are not working in the hospital. It is a corporate hospital. It is difficult to manage talent pool. But they have done it successfully and they are not very dangerous to face men. I'm going to say, Emil Klan got for Dr. Uttraman sir. So he used to encourage a lot, he used to guide a lot in the world. And the man who was talking about the number of restaurants. See, to get a good will into it, it's not that easy, right? And she is the lady behind the successful gentleman. And their forum is growing in a very big way. So she is also here with us. And next in line, we are very grateful to have Dr. Satya Kumar. He is a professor of human resources. So he is here with us. I'm there in the school of management. I'm one more in Dr. Kudgele. Wherever required, you can draw a resource in Dubai. I think this is a male or very, what do you call, blessings we can't really ask for, right? This is a huge kind of a support. So Professor is here. And next in line, we have Dr. Viswa. So he is also from the school of management. He is from the management department. And he is joining us on the panel. So primarily, uh, I, I now hand over the floor uh, to uh, Dr. Ramakrishnan to set the agenda and then probably they can take it on top. So, as I said, the human resources have been made, the man management becomes whether it is a small company or a big company, whether it is you are working with five people or working with 500 people. The technical is behind. So here we have brought them here as a panel to find out from their experiences. And same way, we have got the faculty here who can give us the technical aspects of it so where we can manage it more efficiently. So we start off the panel discussion first, Mr. Anand, to start his experience in his interview. Good morning, everyone. I'm Anand. I run a spinning unit in Madurai. Uh, we are of the size of 8,400 spindles. To tell you, uh, our unit size is of 8,400 spindles. So we employ around 15 staff members and around 80 laborers. So to to be specific about my industry, so people talk of employing best talent pool and best of everything. But uh, we we are a little bit different because our industry is stressed and spinning industry is not in very good shape today. So we are not into the best for everything. So we search for good talent pool only for a good manager or one or two staff members. The rest, say the supervisor or the other category, we take in freshers and we want to train them and that would suit our budget. And we are more focused on uh, laborers. So textile industry is more labor intensive. It is the next uh, second to agriculture job generator for the country. So we need more of labor. So today labor is very scarce. Though we may feel that there are a lot of people, a lot of population in the country, to source labor is a great problem for us. So we take the help of uh, agents and we don't get sufficient labor through them. Then we have the uh, contract labor system also. So we have a great difficulty in getting our labor source. So that is our main uh, aim to fulfill our requirement of production requirements. So 
I pass it on to the next one. டாக்டர் சொன்னதாக நான் சொல்ல நினச்சேன் ஏன்னா வந்து நான் டைரெக்டாக இந்த கொஷனுக்கு பதில் சொல்கிறதுக்கு முன்னாடி என்னை பற்றியும் என்னுடைய இண்டஸ்ட்ரியை பற்றியும் கொஞ்சம் சொன்னால் தான் இது ஓரளவு இது பண்ண டைரெக்டாக இதுக்கு வந்து ஒரு சரியான பதில் யாருமே கொடுக்க முடியாதுங்கிறது என்னுடைய வியூ நான் வந்து மதுரை மெடிக்கல் காலேஜில் பி ஃபார்ம் படித்தேன் நைன்டீன் செவன்டி ஃபைவ் செவன்டி நைனில் செவன்டி நைனில் நாங்கள் படித்த முடியும் அப்போ வந்து மதுரை மெடிக்கல் காலேஜ்லேயும் சென்னை ம மெட்ராஸ் மெடிக்கல் காலேஜில் மட்டும்தான் பி ஃபார்ம் உண்டு இந்த மாதிரி இவ்வளோ காலேஜ் கிடையாது வருஷத்துக்கே ஐம்பது பேர் தான் படித்து முடித்து வெளியில் வருவோம் ஸோ நாங்கள் படித்து முடிக்கையிலே எங்கள் அப்பா வந்து ரொம்ப காலமாக மருந்து கடை வச்சுருந்ததுனால நான் வந்து ஒரு ஃபார்மசிட்டிக்கல் ஃபேக்ட்ரி தான் ஆரம்பிக்கிறது என்னுடைய எய்மு ஸோ முடித்த பிறகு நாங்கள் அதெல்லாம் வந்து அப்போ வந்து சென்ட்ரல் போர்ட் ஆஃப் அப்ரெண்டிஸ்ஷிப்னு ஸ்கீம்னு ஒன்று உண்டு அதில் வந்து ட்ரைனிங் போவோம் யூஸ்வலாக பி ஃபார்ம் முடித்த எல்லோரும் மதுரையில் எக்ஸாம் முடித்து முடித்த ஒரு அடுத்த ஒரு வாரத்துலேயே சென்னைக்கு போயிடுவோம் சென்னைக்கு போய் ஃபார்மசிட்டிக்கல் கம்பெனிஸ்லாம் போய் ட்ரைனியாக ஜாயின் பண்ணுவோம் ஸோ அந்த மாதிரி இருக்கையில் நாங்கள் வந்து இந்த மாதிரி ஒரு பிளான் பண்ண நம்ம வந்து ஒரு ஃபார்மசிட்டிக்கல் ஃபேக்ட்ரி ஆரம்பிக்கணும் அதுவும் யாரோடனா என்னுடைய கிளாஸ்மேட்ஸோட என்னுடைய என்னுடைய பார்ட்னர்னு சொல்லுவோம்ல கிளாஸில் எனக்கு முந்திரா நம்பர் பிந்திரா நம்பர் உள்ள பார்ட்னர்ஸ் ஸோ அந்த மாதிரி நாலு பார்ட்னர்ஸோட நாலு பேரும் நாங்கள் வந்து ஒரு காலேஜில் ரூம்மேட்ஸாக இருந்தோம் ஹாஸ்டலில் ரூம்மேட்ஸாக இருந்தோம் ஸோ நாலு பேரும் சேர்ந்து இந்த பிஸ்னஸ்ஸை நைன்டீன் எயிட்டி டூவில் ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணோம் ஸோ அன்னையிலேருந்து இன்றைக்கு வர வெற்றிகரமாக நடத்திக்கிட்டு இருக்கிறோம் இதுதான் எங்களுடைய பேக்ரவுண்டு ஸோ பி ஸ்டார்ட் அவுட் வித்து ஒரு வேறு ஒரு ஃபேக்ட்ரியில் லோன் லைசன்சிங்னு சொல்கிறது ஒரு மூணு ப்ராடக்டாக வேறு ஒரு ஃபேக்ட்ரியில் எங்கள்கிட்ட ஃபேக்ட்ரி கிடையாது ஒரு ரெண்டட் ப்ரிமிசஸ் நாங்கள் ஆஃபீஸாக எடுத்துக்கிட்டு வேறு ஒரு ஃபேக்ட்ரியில் போய் நாங்கள் ப்ராடக்ட்டை மேனுஃபேக்சர் பண்ணி மார்க்கெட்டிங் பண்ணோம் ஸோ நாங்கள் வந்து ட்ரைனிங் போகையிலேயே அப்போவே எங்களுக்கு தாட் வந்துருச்சு நாங்கள் வந்து மறு கம்பெனியை ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ண போகிறோம்னு ஸோ ப்ரொடக்ஷனுக்கு மட்டும்தான் ட்ரைனிங் எடுத்துக்கிட்டோம் மார்க்கெட்டிங்கு நாங்கள் எந்த ட்ரைனிங் எடுத்துக்கலை ஸோ மார்க்கெட்டிங்கை வந்து நாங்களாகவே கற்றுக்கிட்டோம் எங்கள் ப்ராடக்ட்ஸ் எடுத்துகிட்டு போய் நாங்களாகவே கற்றுக்கிட்டோம் அதில் என்னுடைய ஒரு பார்ட்னர் வந்து சிவகாசி பொன்ராஜன் பேர் ஒரு பார்ட்னர் வந்து திருவாரூர் குணசேகரன் இன்னொரு பார்ட்னர் முஸ்லீமு அவர் வந்து பெரிய குளம் ஸோ நாலு பேர் நாங்களாகவே பிஸ்னஸ்ஸை கற்றுக்கிட்டு மார்க்கெட்டிங் கற்றுக்கிட்டு அதுக்கப்புறம் எங்களுடைய ஓன் ஃபேக்ட்ரி நைன்டீன் எயிட்டி எயிட்டில் ஒரு ஓன் ஃபேக்ட்ரி பில்டிங் கருப்பாயிரணியில் பில்டிங் கட்டி இது பண்ணோம் நம்ம சின்னையாவோட அப்பா தான் எங்களுக்கு ஆடிட்டர் எயிட்டி டூவிலிருந்து அதுக்கப்புறம் வந்து இப்போ டூ தௌசண்ட் நைனில் இன்னொரு புது ஃபேக்ட்ரிக்கு போனோம் அந்த ஃபேக்ட்ரி வந்து உரங்கான்பேட்டை இண்டஸ்ட்ரியல் எஸ்டேட்டுக்கு பக்கத்தில் மகியாவுக்கு ப முன்னாடி அஃப்கோர்ஸ் நாங்கள் வந்து இண்டஸ்ட்ரியல் எஸ்டேட்டுக்குள்ள இல்லை அதுக்கு வெளியில் இருக்கிறோம் ஸோ இப்படி வரையில் வந்து இப்போ 
தற்செயல எனக்கு வந்து இது இன்றைக்கி வரணும் அப்படின்னு சொல்லுது எஸ்பிஐ கணேஷ் ஆனால் கணேஷ் எதுவுமே சொல்லலை இன்னைக்கு காலையில் அண்ணே நீங்கள் ரெடியாக இருக்கீங்களா ஒம்பதரை மணிக்கு கிளம்பும் அப்படின்னு சொன்னாப்ல அதுக்கிடையில் நாங்கள் பேசவே கிடையாது ஸோ சரின்ட்டு இந்த மாதிரி ஒரு பேனல் டிஸ்கஷன் மட்டும் சொல்லியிருந்தாப்ல நான் தற்செயல இப்போ வந்து ஒரு பாயிண்ட் எழுதுனே எம்ப்ளாய் வெல்ஃபேர்னு ஒரு பாயிண்ட் எழுதி வச்சேன் சரி இந்த பாயிண்ட்டை நம்ம சொல்லலான்னு நீங்கள் கடைசியாக அந்த பாயிண்ட்டு தான் கேட்குறீங்க இப்போ வந்து எம்ப்ளாயி எப்படி ரீட்டைன் பண்ணணும் அப்படின்னு சொல்லி பார்க்க போனால் எங்களுடைய எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் தான் நாங்கள் எங்கேயும் இப்படி கற்றுக்கிட்டலாம் வரல எங்களுடைய எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் தான் ஸோ எம்ப்ளாயிஸ் நம்மள்ட்ட இருக்கிற எம்ப்ளாயிஸுக்கு வந்து அதுவும் எங்களுடைய ஃபார்மசூட்டிக்கல் இண்டஸ்ட்ரியில் ஒன்று வந்து க்ளீனினஸ் ஹைஜீன் கண்டாமினேஷன் எங்களுடைய தொழிலே வந்து கண்டாமினேஷனை ப்ரிவெண்ட் பண்ணணும் கண்டாமினேஷன்னா ஏதோ தரையில் உள்ள தூசி உள்ள விழுகிறது மட்டும் கிடையாது ஒரு மருந்து இன்னொரு மருந்து மிக்ஸ் ஆனாலும் அது ரொம்ப பெரிய கண்டாமினேஷன் அது ஸோ இப்போ ஒரு பேரஸ்டமாலும் மெட்ஃபார்மின்னு ரெண்டுமே வெள்ளையாக தான் இருக்கும் பவுடர் ரெண்டுமே வெள்ளையாக தான் இருக்கும் ஒரு துணி வந்து மெட்ஃபார்மின் பேரஸ்டமால் அப்படின்னு தான் கூட போச்சு முடிஞ்சு போச்சு ஸோ அந்த மாதிரி வந்து எங்கள் தொழில் வந்து ரொம்ப ரொம்ப ஸ்ட்ரிஞ்சண்டாக இந்த ஹைஜீன் கண்டாமினேஷன் இதையெல்லாம் வந்து ப்ரிவெண்ட் பண்ணுற வேண்டிய சூழ்நிலையில் இருக்கிறவங்க நாங்கள் ஸோ எங்களுக்கு நிறைய கண்ட்ரோல்ஸ் இருக்குது எங்களுக்கு நிறைய ரெகுலேட்ரி ஒர்க்கு நிறைய இருக்குது நிறைய ஆடிட்ஸ் வருவாங்க நாங்கள் இப்போ கரண்ட்டாக பண்ணுற எங்களோட ஆக்டிவிட்டி வந்து தமிழ்நாட்லேயும் கேரளாவிலையும் டைரெக்டாக மார்க்கெட்டிங் பண்ணுறோம் அது இல்லாமல் நிறைய மேனுஃபேக்சரர்ஸுக்கு பாம்பேயில் உள்ளவங்க சென்னையில் உள்ளவங்களுக்கு நாங்கள் மார்க்கெட்டிங் நாங்கள் மேனுஃபேக்சர் பண்ணி கொடுக்குறோம் அதாவது கான்ட்ராக்ட் மேனுஃபேக்சரிங் பண்ணி கொடுக்குறோம் ஸோ எம்ப்ளாயி ரீட்டைன் பண்ணுறதுக்கு அதுக்கான ஆக்டிவிட்டீஸ் அப்படின்னு பார்க்க போனால் இப்போ முதல்ல நாங்கள் ஒரு இருபது வருஷத்துக்கு முன்னாடியே உட்காந்துக்கலாங்க ஒரு இருபது வருஷத்துக்கு முன்னாடியே அப்போலாம் வந்து இந்த அண்ணா நகர் தாசில்தார் நகரில் நிறைய ஃபார்மசூட்டிக்கல் கம்பெனிஸ் முஸ்லீம் க்ரோத் சாதாரணமாக ஒரு சின்ன வீடாக வாடகைக்கு எடுப்பாங்க அந்த வீட்டோட கிச்சன் தான் லேபு ஹாலு தான் ப்ரொடக்ஷன் பண்ணுற இடம் அப்புறம் முன்னாடி இருக்க ஹால் தான் முன்னாடி இருக்கிற ரிசப்ஷன் ஏரியா தான் ஃபினிஷ் குட்ஸ் ஸ்டோரு ஸோ அந்த மாதிரி தான் போய்கிட்டாங்க பட் அவங்கெல்லாம் வந்து அந்த எம்ப்ளாயியோட அந்த ஒர்க்கரோட பெனிஃபிட் எதையுமே கவலைப்படலை ஸோ நாங்கள் ஒரு இருபது வருஷத்துக்கு முன்னாடி என்ன பண்ணோம் இப்போ வந்து அவங்க ஒரு ட்ரெஸ் போட்டுட்டு வராங்க அந்த ட்ரெஸ் அவங்க வந்து வெளியில் வந்து வீட்டை விட்டு வெளியில் வரையில் அந்த காலத்தில் என்ன ஒரு ஐநூறுரூவா அறநூறுரூவா நானூறுரூவா அந்த மாதிரி தான் சேலரி இருந்துச்சு ஸோ அப்போ அவங்க வந்து அந்த ட்ரெஸ்ஸை வந்து இப்போ ஒரு பாதுகாக்கணும்னு நினைப்பாங்க ஸோ நம்ம அவங்கள வந்து இங்கே கீழே உட்கார வச்சு ஏதோ மேலே ஒன்று கொட்டி இது வீணாக போயிடுச்சுன்னா அவங்களுக்கு இது மனசு வருத்தமாக இருக்கும் நம்மளுடைய பெனிஃபிட்டு நம்மளுக்கு என்ன தேவை நம்மளுக்கு ஹைஜீன் வேணும் ஸோ அப்போ நாங்கள் வந்து ஒரு இருபது வருஷத்துக்கு முன்னாடி இருபது இன்னும் கூடவே கூட இருபத்தஞ்சு வருஷத்துக்கு முன்னாடியே நாங்கள் அவங்களுக்குலாம் வந்து பேண்ட்டு பைஜாமா கொடுக்க ஆரம்பித்தோம் அப்போ ரொம்ப அவங்கள்டெல்லாம் அந்த காலத்து இருபத்தஞ்சு வருஷத்துக்கு முன்னாடி யோசிச்சு பாருங்கள் ரொம்ப அப்ஜெக்ஷன் இருக்கும் அப்போ அந்த பொண்ணுங்களை கூப்பிட்டு இதை போட்டு பாரு அதனால் உனக்கு எந்த சிரமமும் கிடையாது அப்படின்னு சொல்லி அவங்களுக்கு அதை நாங்கள் போட்டு காமிச்சு அவங்களுக்கு ட்ரைனிங் கொடுத்து பண்ண ஆரம்பித்தோம் அப்போவே ஏர் கண்டிஷன் அப்போலாம் யார் ஏர் கண்டிஷனிங்லாம் பண்ண மாட்டாங்க நாங்கள் ஏர் கண்டிஷனிங் பண்ணி அந்த மாதிரி ஒரு என்வரான்மெண்ட்டை இது பண்ணோம் ஸோ இன்றைக்கும் நாங்கள் வந்து எங்களுடைய எம்ப்ளாயீஸ் ஒர்க்கர்ஸுக்கு பல விதமான பெனிஃபிட்ஸ் அது வந்து ஸ்டாச்சுட்ரி பெனிஃபிட்ஸையும் கொடுத்துட்றோம் அது இல்லாமல் வந்து இன்னும் அடிஷ்னல் பெனிஃபிட் இப்போ வந்து எல்லாருக்கும் வந்து ஆயுத பூஜை சமயத்தில் ஒரு ஃபங்க்ஷன் நடத்துகிறோம் ஃபங்க்ஷன் நடத்தி அதில் உள்ள எல்லாரையும் பார்ட்டிசிபேட் பண்ண வைக்கிறோம் அந்த எங்கள் எம்ப்ளாயீஸோட ஃபேமிலி மெம்பர்ஸ் எல்லாம் அவங்கள எல்லாம் ஒன்றும் கண்ட்ரோல் பண்ணுறதில்ல நீ தான் வரணும் நீ தான் வரக்கூடாது உன் ஹஸ்பண்டை கூட்டுறக்கூடாது பிள்ளைகளை கூட்டுறக்கூடாதுல எதுவும் கண்ட்ரோல் இல்லை யார் வேணாலும் வரலாம் எல்லாருக்கும் அன்றைக்கி சாப்பாடு ஃப்ரீ எல்லாருக்கும் ஆளுக்கு ஒரு கிஃப்ட்டு இந்த மாதிரிலாம் பண்ணுறோம் ஸோ இதெல்லாம் பண்ணுறோம் ப்ளஸ் வந்து எவ்வரி இயர் வந்து நாங்கள் வந்து இன்க்ரிமெண்ட் கொடுக்குறோம் ஸோ அது வந்து எங்களுக்கு லாபகரமான இயராக இருந்தாலும் சரி லாபம் இல்லாத குறைச்சலாக இருந்த இயராக இருந்தாலும் சரி நாங்கள் வந்து அவங்களுக்கு வந்து இன்க்ரிமெண்ட் கொடுக்குறோம் ஸோ அதுக்கு வந்து ஒரு அசஸ்மெண்ட் இதெல்லாம் வச்சுருக்குறோம் யார் என்ன பண்ணுறாங்க அப்படிங்கிற ஒரு அசஸ்மெண்ட் எல்லாம் வச்சு நாங்கள் இன்க்ரிமெண்ட் கொடுக்குறோ
uh, I think we are all fresh after a cup of coffee or tea. And uh, we started our dental clinic way around in 1999. And I started it alone with one staff. I have a staff management on the customer. And the staff is not leaving, we have a clinic put it quite long. And that is what will happen because dentistry or any health field, staff will not be can't work. Because dentistry is always called the four-handed dentistry. We need some assistance. We need a lot of assistance. Doctors, medical field, lab assistants, nursing staff, uh, duty doctors, round the clock we need persons. So hiring them is one difficulty. Retaining them is another difficulty. And the best part of it is training and motivating them. Training is very, very important because in the end, Nambi Wanga and Nangarko and Badrama Patagra have been the advertisement for them. Corporate hospitals are brands, so you go to the brand. So whether you go to the brand, you don't depend on the doctor alone. So these people serve as the mask of the brand. So how will every retain Pandra, the motivate Pandra is one of the biggest challenges in healthcare because greener pastures to they move. Even from the doctor to the nurse, they move to a different field. So other than the main challenge in field left. So if any of you have any questions or any experiences, I have come here to share the experience as well as take back what I can do to my clinic. Okay? Thank you. Yeah. Now, as such, we have heard the experiences in different industry. Though the uh, topic was uh, panel discussion about HR related and things like that, yesterday after uh, surgery at midnight about 12 o'clock while I I was about to go to bed, uh, switched on the uh, phone and I was seeing a YouTube video by Dr. Shetty from Narayana Hirdalaya. So what he is saying is 90% of his employees are women, rather for the grade 3, grade 4 staff. Why he says is because if I pay 6,000 to, uh, to a male, he will spend 3,000 for himself and spend 3,000 for the family. Whereas if I have a female as an employee, uh, the entire 6,000 is spent for the family and thus the next generation also grows. So there are different perspectives in HR and how to manage and things like that. So as we have had the practical experience, now we have call upon the faculty member to share his experience. And rather the more technical aspects and theoretical aspects of it. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon to all of you. Good afternoon to all of you. I think at the outset I should say it's a pleasant uh, surprise that, uh, you know, thanks to Dr. Ramakrishnan and all the members of this August gathering, <coughs> I never thought that I will be the panel member when I walked in this morning here. Uh, but to introduce about myself, uh, I am from corporate to academic person, actually. I was working in corporate. I was working in the various companies like Ashok Leyland, Enfield India Limited, MRF, and Binney's and about 20 years of you know corporate life and I resigned as a vice president and took up teaching uh, post my doctorate in occupational psychology <coughs> psychology which is a special specialization in occupational area and I'm teaching here for the last uh, 10 years at TSM and uh, 15 years is the total academic experience so I have seen both sides the academic side as well as the the practical side it's a very interesting question and uh, which is one of the major challenge even asked by the students, you know, who are specializing in human resources. And uh, when, when we talk of money, the one beautiful question was that we pay highest, uh, you know, the salary which is in the, uh, you know, again among the competitors, but still why the people leave. And what is very interesting is that uh, it is not money alone that keeps people to stick on with the organization. I think we call something called moral issues. Uh, morale is what we call as the uh, satisfaction and individual derives by virtue of his interaction with the uh, fellow members, with the boss and subordinate, the work environment, the time of freedom that you get in the workplace, the interaction that you have with other clients and customers. It's not money. It's much more than money. I think this is what really, you know, matters a lot. Uh, on the, uh, there we always talk about two things. One is the motivational factors, monetary motivational factors and non-monetary motivational factors. Something we call recognition. At the end of the week, I had in some of my organizations, every month we identify uh, one or two best performers and call them and garland. We will be having it in the reception hall. 
you know pretty well sambangi mala nalla madakkum adu and entire office e abbiye full la gama gama appdi irukum and the morning and the corridor vadiya poranga over therame indha mala enakka indha mala enakka andra or angry or thinking irundhe irukum at the end of the day last day evening we call two best performers identify and we call give them the garland mala potone kai eduthu kai eduthu kai thattalam appo nariya irukum appo then we take it in the mala in the kai la potna car la poi car la vechittu indha car e manakkum வீட்டுக்கு போன உடனே த மொமெண்ட் யூ வி வாக் அலாங் வித் தி கார்ல் கார்லேண்ட் இன் த ஹேண்ட் ஜஸ்ட் திங்க் ஆஃப் தி கைண்ட் ஆஃப் ஃபீல் த ஃபீல் தட் அ பர்சன் கேட்ஸ் வைல் பீங் கார்லேண்டட் வைல் கேரியிங் இட் அண்ட் வைல் வாக்கிங் அட் ஹோம் இன் சைட் த ஹோம் வித் த கார்லேண்ட் அண்ட் தர் சம்திங் தட் ஃபினாமினல் தட் ஹேப்பன் ஸோ ஆல் தீஸ் இஷ்யூஸ் ஆர் ரிலேட்டிங் ஃபேக்டர்ஸ் நாட் வித் ஸ்டாண்டிங் மணி அலோ ரெண்டாவது வந்து குவைட் இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங் இஸ் வி டிட் அ ரிசர்ச் இன்ஃபேக்ட் இட்ஸ் மை பேப்பர் கூகுள் ஸ்காலரில் செக் பண்ணலாம் வி டிட் அன் அனாலிசிஸ் இந்த ப்ரைவேட் company employees who are paid more than the government employees we did an analysis yaar adhigama vaalai vittu poranga paathinga nariya vaalai vittu porangala jaasti yaar sambala vaangrangalo private organization la irukkavanga nariya vaalai vittu poranga not the government people there are lot of other factors the kind of freedom that they get not that 10 mani ee vaalai ke 11 mani ku varanga ngiradhu illa but the kind of freedom they get the kind of interactions they get the kind of satisfaction they get in the job so that matters a lot of thing ngiradhu und it's my view Uh, which i have experienced in very many companies so we most of the times start appreciating uh, an appreciation doesn't cost much i mean i nanu the some of the training programs i used to say at least daily please find two people whom you appreciate manadara paratam rendu pera rendu pera edha or karana definite a irukana vaazhkaila and rendu pera daily paratana avur naalikku thirin paathina or 50 per vandu will orthara paratrappa and there will be 50 reactions you know in favor of you and that makes a day great and we say you made my day so that's my uh, views sir. thank you thank you sir as he shared is uh, it's not only money it's the emotion which takes place அப்படி பார்த்துட்டு இருக்கும்போது ஐ ரிமெம்பர் ஐ வாஸ் வாக்கிங் அட் மீனாட்சி மிஷன் ஹாஸ்பிட்டல் அங்கே ஃபவுண்டர் மிஸ்டர் சைதராமன் சார் டாக்டர் சைதராமன் சார் அவங்களுடைய இதில் வந்து பார்க்கும்போது இது கன்சல்டன்ட் சார் அதில் பாயிண்டட் நோ கொஷின்ஸ் ஆஸ்ட் ஆஃப்டர் தட் த கன்சல்டன்ட் ஹீ டஸ் ஜாப் ஈஸ் கிவன் ஃபுல் ஃப்ரீடம் தேர் நோ கொஷின்ஸ் ஆஸ்ட் அபவுட் எனி திங் அண்ட் எவ்ரி திங் ஹீ இஸ் எம்ப்ளாய் ஹீ டேக் கேர் ஆஃப் ஹிஸ் ஜாப் த ஃப்ரீடம் மேட்டர்ஸ் தேர் மணி கம் செகண்ட்ரி பிகாஸ் compared to any corporate hospital everybody knows the consultant there or any other workman there are paid less but they are all happy how that is what is what he is saying but now i call upon mr biswas to share his views thank you very much uh, as uh, professor shatya kumar said that uh, even i didn't know that i'll be the panel member but thank you for uh, uh, giving me the opportunity to talk to you and learn something uh, I come from an industry uh, where uh, you require to control smile, control people when you are not there, smile included. So I come from Taj Group of Hotels, there I worked for long, then I migrated to academics and I, for six years, almost six years I taught at IIMs and recently just one and a half months back I joined this place. Uh, so uh, as I, I don't know you have asked too many questions perhaps uh, if you can dwell on only one of the question uh, so far as my understanding with the professional understanding and my academic uh, judgment what uh, permits me to say is that uh, it's not the salary as such uh, ultimately it turns out to be how fair you are it is not what you think as what fair you are you always make a positive estimation about yourself i can prove in minutes actually uh, but actually you do not have that time but i uh, we always as a employer we always have a tendency to positively estimate our fairness but uh, the fairness is little really complicated in an organizational context so uh, it is not uh, what you think as fair as such but it should be sold to the employees as fair so the the question is being dealt in the literature uh, in academic literature well so w- one of the thing is that uh, that it is not only the reward which you think that you are giving to your employees as fair but how you are distributing that and as professor suttakumar was saying that recognition the the third element is that uh, the the interaction the in multiple interaction happens in your presence or in your absence as a boss as a employer there are multiple transaction unfolds through your organizations the question is at the end of the day when employees are leaving their their office 
whether that multiple interaction which unfolded behind your back, whether employees getting have, are having positive net positive net experience with them. So if it is not the positive net experiences, then you look into your supervisory networks and the network of interaction which unfolds, whether the fairness is even embedded in that kind of context. Uh, so uh, there are so many things to speak, but I think I should uh, give it to the panel. Thank you for your time. Now, oh, as such, the panel, they have introduced themselves. So we'll go question-wise, like. So I hand over the mic to Chinea. He'll raise the question and let the panel re respond to that. Subsequently, I think all of you also can take part in the discussion and go ahead. The next question being, we are talking of a appraisal system. It all happens in the sense people attach importance to it only when the organization is substantially bigger. Say 10 plus people, 20 plus people. Assuming a lot of us are dealing with only say 4 or 5 employees or say maximum 10 to 15 employees. How do you put in place a robust or rather at least it should, like he said, it should the P, the lab, the staff should perceive it as being robust and fair. That is why we have to assess the reward. That is reward, monetary as well as overall, and the due recognition. How do you put this in place for smaller organizations? Because I think that will be the predominant question in most of our minds. Because the minute it becomes structured, 20 people, 30 people, you have a HRs, a dedicated HR that is taken care of, at least deemed to be taken care of. But for smaller organizations which deals with 10 people, below 20 employees, other fair how do you give that perception and how do you convey that message and retain employees? Yeah, I think with a smaller organization, I think I can ask Shanti to answer about this. How she is doing it. It goes on. It goes on. Uh. Uh, appraisal in smaller organizations like healthcare and my clinic as such. Chinna Velalam Pakra nursing assistants ka first training one the proper kurtrum. Adala one we just see how they are motivated, like evlo sincere are kanga and the work. Le. So that is first point, how, how much sincerity and dedicated they are. Second, we teach them about communication to the patients. So how far they take the clinic or they uh, give instructions to the patient, they make it a more pleasurable experience to the patient. That's one we keep judging. Third, when the Munna when the review or a questionnaire, Marie patients could those who had the time who came for the third visit, not for the uh, first visit, they had to fill the form. And Adala when the can you comment on any staff whom you're very um, uh, friendly or uh, whom you say has done the best work? So, other base pani, we gave small gifts, Marie first to Kurto. Other Kapra Adala cumulative us in the bonus Kurkambodha, we give appraisal. That's what we do for a paramedical staff. This doesn't apply to the doctors as such. So For doctors, what we do is that uh, they have to uh, convince in an ethical way and treat the patients in an ethical way, finish the treatment from first to the end. Other pandam bodhu, we give them uh, initiatives. That is it. So, so I take it like this. So they give, go on the customer feedback. So our industry is the customer feedback and how the staff have helped them. So now, Anand, you can share it. So in appraisal of staff or labor, we need to have a transparent system. So they need to understand how we are assessing them and it should be open house to that. You should set the goals and say this is your goal, this is how you, are, you will be assessed. So it should be an open platform so that they can understand, so that you won't say you have been biased to this person or that person. So that will be a real motivating factor and who, and who gets the better points will be rewarded. How frequently do you say? Once in a month. To me, it appears performance appraisal is a very critical issue in any organization uh, because, as he said, transparency and you know, a kind of belief on the boss and all these things. In a portal, uh, performance appraisal is a continuous process, it is not a one time phenomena, it's neither a month, uh, you know, a periodical one, but it's a continuous process. Second one, uh, the parameters on which I'm going to assess your performance have to be transparent. Like he said, I'm going to list out the points. In the point, I'm going to evaluate you. 
Then now what happens in the performance appraisals, normally the bias, what we call as error of recency, immediate on another error of, normally people tend to perform much better during January, February and March and not in the beginning of the year because that's error of recency. We also tempted to remember the recent phenomena, the frailty of memory. Human memory, we cannot really depend much on that. What happened last? And recent on another than Allah Nyabarkon, that will have an impact on the performance appraisal. First thing is continuous. It has to be periodical. Secondly, the parameters on which I'm going to assess, I keep you posted, informed. Number three, uh, I'm going to have, it, you know, the, and then the criterion can then a value of insulator. Fourth one, I'm going to tell them that self-assessment need to be done. He has to list out. And uh, now I will be also listing out because it's a continuous assessment, it's not a failing process. So at the end of the day, in the end of the day, most of the times the performance. Suppose if I'm going to say that you have not really performed up to the mark and he can accept that yes, it is there. And second, importantly performance appraisal feedback and the feedback is very very essential we don't stop we are going to do the feedback feedback or the following step is counseling we have to counsel in case if the person can be rectified in the situation over a period of time will accept will he be able to change so in the five six processes have to be there in a performance appraisal whether it's a smaller organization or a bigger organization with these parameters are followed then it will exceptionally good uh, you know the performance performance appraisal system will exist. Thank so, you. as we understand now, first will be the customer feedback as they said, then subsequently open appraisal system. And here comes another point of view, open appraisal system with the satisfaction of whom you are valuing. So they also should accept what is that. So you make them understand what they ex what is expected of them and then appraise them and let them also concur to it. Now, we have got an experienced person here in the pharma industry to answer us. In the industry, we have a small module, a small module, a small module, a small module, various departments. QA, QC, over a department, there are 10 people in a department. Total, there are 50 people in a supervisor. There are various departments. So, what we usually do is the department head at the end of the year, March, we have to do the work in March, we have to do the work in March, we have to do the work in March. So, what we say is that every month we have to do the work in March. And the other cumulative is at the end of the year, so long as the ones in three months, so long as the ones in three months, so long as the ones in three months, so long as the ones in three months. Ino ane, nama ramba wapana awu apres panam mudiyela. Ina apres panna, awunggal kulla ego problem mandir de. So, wordana mande nama para team, wordana mande degrade panium panu mudiya de. So, counselling, training, inggalane mande nereye training aspect sunde. Over dayum workim pandra dekik training kurukro. So, ande counselling ande training na mande or pre effective ana itu kurukro. So, like uh, after appraisal, definitely the counselling and different aspects, different uh, work has to be appreciated accordingly and periodic assessment, that is very important, not seasonal or not during the annual end or anything like that or nearing the Bali or anything like that. Now, when we come to Mr. Biswas, he has worked with Taj. So, however you have assessed, at last he has to come back in front of the customer with a smiling face. So, there his assessment becomes very crucial and very critical. So, he, whatever you say, good or bad, he always has to put a smiling face before his customer. So, let us ask what this was to say. Uh, yeah, that's called aesthetic lever. I, I have written a small paper at the very beginning of my academic journey from Taj to academics. Uh, however, I just uh, I'll differ from all the arguments which are prevailing at, the, at this point of time because in a smaller organization and having ten, 10 employees, I urge you to think little differently. You know, how many people comes to Bombay, you know, to become uh, Sarukh Khan? <laughs> There is only one Sarukh Khan. I, I do this, this, I deal this question in my class. Uh, how many of you, those who are present in this room, want to fail? No. If that is the answer you already conceived in your mind, I urge you to think the employee who has joined your company or your place, he also want to be Sarukh Khan in his own format. 
So, if at the cost of performance appraisal, don't forget about the performance. Because ritual is only leading or it is only done to achieve performance. So in the quagmire of performance appraisal, you might be losing that, that objective of called performance. So I urge you to think if every, each one of you want to excel in your life and that employee, no matter what background that person comes from, he also want to excel as an employee. Now if he is not performing something, so he also came to that organization to be somebody. But what happened in a collective interaction over there, he gets so much cues and behavior and he, does, he tries to understand your systems, he becomes, over a period of time, perhaps so many things actually happen, it's called unjust experience. He accumulates so much, perhaps you didn't speak to him well. There are so many things can actually unfold during multiple interaction in a day. So he accumulates all those things and that he used to do the next thing what you, want, you ask him to do. The question is, I, I, I limit myself with my argument is that if somebody is not performing well, forget about appraisal. I think, you, I think the most important thing is in a smaller organization, I'm not talking about a bigger organization, bigger organization in Tata's we do it uh, in a very uh, systematic way, but in a smaller organization where you have direct interaction, you have a pri I, I can tell you that you, are a, you have a privilege to interact with them regularly. That is not available in a bigger organization. Do you know how, uh, how helpless we feel in a bigger organization that we are not able to talk to our employees? So in a smaller organization, this is I don't require a performance appraisal as such. Perhaps you, what I urge you to do is to talk to him. Know him, where he comes from, what is his background, listen to him. I mean, uh, and perhaps uh, when he goes home during, I think uh, these are the people, those who comes from smaller places to your city. So when they go home, take care of that part. Give him little money. For example, uh, I suggested I used to train uh, Indian oil guys, so they are petrol pump uh, attendant. You know, the problem is uh, there are multiple problems in the petrol pump. So they think that the turnover is very high, and with their salary, they cannot get people. So similar kind of problem what you are suggesting. So uh, there is a lot of things can be done. For example, when they they have a kids, correct? The best way to reach. Sorry, I am taking too much time. No, 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 no. Uh, so. Uh, the best way to reach to their heart and mind is to their kids. I'm not telling you to manipulate that. I'm telling you honest, uh, sincere effort on this, saying that, for example, what we used to do in one of our hotels is that we know our cafeteria, we one day we used to call for the program, kids program, they have come with the family, we used to take their kids food uh, handprint and used to put it on the on this uh, on the wall because our employees are emotionally blackmailed most of the time our employees uh, first time the first guy comes in the morning is a clinton bill clinton is standing in front of you we have to speak to him that guy goes next guy comes over there is a driver third guy is somebody else maybe the politician who expect you to do like this uh, so the, and the multiple interaction unfold so there are the likelihood of having negative experience out of uh, 2,000 or 3,000 interaction in a day is high likely and one of the interaction of the customers can actually can go wrong. Problem is, uh, HR guy, we are sitting in our office, how do I reach to them when I'm not there? So the best way to do this is to reach to the kids. The problem we used to do is that kids handprint we used to put there and we used to try to remind them that you know they're in a good ecology when they used to come for their food they should see their things and, and next time perhaps they come the kids and they measure they have grown up so there are different ways to reach to them in a smaller organization i urge you to go i mean look into beyond appraisal the formality part as such look into the sincere and the human part of appraisal sorry for so much time so uh, that's uh, another perspective like so it is performance appraisal or appraising the performance so where you have to definitely take care of the individual it is not only his work not only how he is satisfying to you but take care of him then he will take care of you as that is any business like so from the audience side i would like to have some questions and things like that. Share yeah, with the rich experience in HR with 10 years scale. Okay, so it is something different from the way I was working in a company and uh, as an HR manager and uh, seeing how the appraisals were done. 
I was not a part of the appraisal uh, forum, I was part of the termination forum. I have seen around 450 people outside the office. <laughs> so uh, that is one of my specialty that people say in the company. So after moving down here into business, uh, actually my office works along with my father in law's office. We all share a building, five story building we share. So he has around 150 staffs and I have around 15 staffs in my office. So it was uh, totally, uh, you can say this, it is uh, not much organized. So just like owner of company, they come, they go, no proper uh, systems happening. So after coming, I just discussed with my partner and we had, uh, we thought, let us make this office a bit uh, organized. So what we did is, uh, first we wanted to make the attendance system correctly, so we made the biometric system. That was the first change which we made. And then uh, we started uh, uh, speaking to employees, just, we were just following 90% of what happened. So that is what even now we do. We don't have any appraisal systems. And uh, we have actually uh, categorized the job. The roles have been defined. Uh, salesmen, uh, executives, leaders, and sales executives, managers, so all the people have the same side. So, for example, the role will have the same side. There is no uh, uh, difference in the salary or the same role. So, that was the first thing which we brought in. And then uh, we didn't have any appraisal systems, and nearly once we gave increment for that particular role, we do that. And the working hours were made a bit flexible. Well, all women employees can come at 7 o'clock to office. And then by 2 to 30, we give them off. 2 to 30 to 4 o'clock, our office is actually closed for lunch break. And we also do any sales that time. So uh, we let them free, they can go bring their kids to school. And after 4 o'clock, what we did is, uh, for 4 to 8 o'clock, they work night. Because most of our dispatches after 7.30, uh, 8 o'clock. So the kids, uh, mostly we are, we are free to get the kids inside, they get their kids to our office. So my wife mostly is in the office and she is just drawing, you know, drawing as well as the rules. And who wants to study, and can study. That way we need to know, so we have the rules where they can go sit the children, they study the parents, they just go see in and come in whatever time they want. And then another thing is the family bonding we have very much. Uh, three years now I started the company. So first year we took the uh, all the people to play a party with their family, to temple with their children, family with them in buses there. Second year we went to Tripoli and uh, this year we went to Uttra last month here with all the employees, all the senior employees, so their family. So even their husbands, so mostly uh, all women employees in office, I'm not talking about the sales people. So my office seven eight people are all women employees, so their husbands all know how this office works, who are all in office and they feel free. Sunday voice and the best part is in three years I, I have not got any resignations. So, all three years. So uh, we, we invite the families to our house for Guru. Every year we celebrate Guru, so we invite them with families. And then weekends when they come on Saturdays, we provide them lunch tokens to go to the uh, Sierra Mills, which is near our office, the end of our office, so we give them lunch tokens so the employees can go. So these are all some of the benefits which uh, we think we do. So they are all very happy, comfortable and the better part is that three months once uh, I speak to them, I call them, uh, we have a lot of behavior and training. The first thing what we do is we respect them. We don't tell them what are our things, we don't call them, we just give respect to all of them and even that's the first thing which they expect of us. And then once we start respecting them and they feel comfortable to come and share their problems with us. If any two employees have some uh, miscommunication or problems, uh, in, this, in the three months once uh, we ask them to get up and speak. What they actually, uh, what problems they have, we ask them the first thing, what, uh, what food we don't feel we never ask. So what are the things which you think we need to change? And then if they do any mistakes, we never scold them. For example, they do, they take the uh, uh, different uh, parties, they take stocks. But the label is being stuck differently. So the entire stocks go wrongly to different places. Based on the order. So it is actually a very big mistake. So when we start scolding them or shouting at them, they never uh, change it. So we call them and ask them to say the mistake what they have done first. So they have to come and say what they have done, then first they are high finding it. So they come and they say what they have done. So once they say to them, they are more than the same mistake doesn't happen. This is one thing which my employees like very much. So this is this which we do regularly to them. And uh, we do, uh, like uh, Dr. Biswa said, uh, we have some games organized for uh, all the employees, families and children. So Saturday is uh, three months once when I set up for the behavior training, we call them to our office. Since I was uh, part of a training team in the company a couple of years when I was working in a person, I organized small small games. So there will be a one-hour game session and then one-hour talking session on behavioral part and how they have to behave to customers. And then we have lunch and we close. 
So this is what we do in the happy to say the three years we hope that we resignations and all those things we will continue to work for. That's nice Vijay, it's nice to hear. Anybody else who wants to give their opinion or discuss on? Uh, yeah, please. There's a question from here. To Tom. Okay, I think I'm audible. I'm audible. Okay. So I have a classic issue. I'm finding it very difficult to recruit new people because their expectations are relatively higher in terms of salary. And even if I'm trying to match them, I'm not able to satisfy those people who have been uh, drawing a lesser salary and getting the result of all of that. So, how do you understand that? I think it's a good question. How do you manage ego systems in the world? That's about recruiting new people. So, in the situation, we will have a new people. So, we will have a new people who are equally salary to fit the salary. We will have a new people who are equally salary to fit the salary. We will have a new people who are equally salary to fit the salary. Ipa, for example, lang Chennai lang dengar tak? Chennai lang dengar tak? Orang 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 pelak company orang orang pelak na anu mau orang kerja orang 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 share punya experience sendiri kerja. Mereka na ingat industri mandi ingat orang orang equal ana industri Madre la almost kerja. Except orang orang itu orang ingat size level companies kerja. So in the farm trip lang industri lang nereya mandi knowledge share punya kemudian nasib sendiri sari kerja boro orang orang technical people kerja. So orang orang kerja anda exposure kerja. So, whereas Angi ulah orang lalat Chennai ulah orang lalat anda exposure tu, for example, orang alat tu orang industri estate mereka itu pura allah farm je dekik company, so orang company ulah lalat kemis, inor company ulah lalat kemis, orang orang class mata arpa ngan, orang orang technology, orang orang share pani kau ngan, without the knowledge of the itu gula, apa aja pani kau ngan, so orang orang anda orang skill, anda orang knowledge jala irku. So, if we recruit them, we have a lot of knowledge in our organization. So, if we have a higher salary, you can also get a lot of knowledge in our organization. So, if we have a lot of knowledge in our organization, we have a lot of knowledge in our organization. So, if we have a lot of increment in our organization, we have a lot of knowledge in our organization. So, if we have a lot of knowledge in our organization, we have a lot of knowledge in our organization. हाँ उनका वंदे वेले ले पोना आलो आप लोग तेरी हो ना हम वेले ले पोना ना हम लोग वंदे द सैलरी कड़क के आधे अपडिंग करा आधे इरको तो नागला हमारे पास ना है तो यार हमारा ना यारों तो सुना क्या इरको मारता हो इरके ला वंदे पिटा ना कैंट है इता तो आप बोला आपने वेले ले तो आपने बोला आप वंदे इरके इंग्रेडिएंट नहीं वंदे इंगे इरकरा उंगल आवडा नहीं वंदे उंगल एडजस्ट पनी पोगनो नहीं पुरुषा उंगल का नहीं वंदे उंगल जूनियर पुरे फाइव इयर्स का एक्सपीरियंस पनाकर कर इंगे इरकरा उंगल ऐसे जगह तक तक पालन जो उसमें एक्सपीरियंस दिल का उंगल का अलग तरह नहीं वली लंदन तक नहीं अंबर ग्रीडी आवडा ऐसे क Higher salary is equal to the higher salary. Over a period of time? Over a period of time, you know, you have a performance. You know, you have a problem. So, so here again we are coming to the same point. Talk with your employee, discuss with your employee, take him into confidence. That is what. Oh, pros. Sir, there is an academic pathona, there is a theory by J.S. Adams of Insulita was only occurred. Uh, what he calls is a theory of equity. And the theory of equity applies small organization or big organization everywhere. Because uh, one thing number we should clearly understand, we are giving salary for the job that is done, not for the individuals. So the J.S. Adams, he says there are two kinds of comparison happens. One is the intra-comparison and inter-comparison. Intra-comparison, ना येन्ना वेला पन्त रहा है अदे याने केन्ना संबलंग करेक्ट है इन्नर अदे ना वांगरा संबलों ना पन्त्रे वेला ये वड़ा अधिक मार का which means I am I doing less work then there is a conflict individually so अदे आठों अंग कंडे बुड़चेर कोटा देंगर अदे कागो याने के नाने वनर रदालियो इन्नर अदे performance आई tend to increase so that I match the salary that I get 
there is one uh, intra comparison inter comparison na inda velaya pandren enikku ivula sambalam kedaikadhu adutha varum adhe vela pandranga but avangalukku sambalam jaasti kedaikadhana that is definitely a conflict or enakku jaasti sambalam kedaikadhu adhe velaya dhaan pandren but avara vida na jaasti pandrena what i will do is na enna adhe velaya panna maten adutha varu avara vida konjam extra challenges i will take extra work i will take so that i will prove that i am paid more which is justified so this philosophy will this theory will always work anal vand i think if the both the people are doing the same quant- amount of work and the same expectation i think the salary have to be matched irrespective of the fact whether is a new employee or an existing employee if you want to keep them on a same platform otherwise the is uh, the you know the uh, people always go back you know nama velila theriyadala behavioral velu mela dhaan theriyadhu but there is something we call as iceberg adu keela vandu we have our own value systems we have our own you know belief systems the way we react to individual subconscious mind la that will really come back and there will be a disharmony definite arc on the market so that's so, very very important to take care so talk to your employees at the same time if it is the same job then you cannot have two payment systems that is what if i am right yeah. yes i'm quite uneconomical in my expression and taking more time perhaps if i answer your question sir uh perhaps um, uh the answer will be rather than taking with i don't know it definitely that person owns certain resource or talent that's why he is putting a price tag on that ego is a later part of the stories but mark it is a uh, talent price is a market determined price correct if you are not paying somebody else is ready to pay so uh, what uh, uh, what we had attempted to address this question in our bigger company and so i invite you to read a written by, a book written by professor v s mahesh the name of the book is a very old book uh, i i i i mean it's a it's a priceless book if you if you i i request you if you can get if you in a old book house somewhere uh, th- the name of the book is the threshold of motivation and we have experimented this in our taj group of hotels uh, the problem is even uh, especially in the 2000 year 2000 when our employees were uh, taken by other service industries you know Uh, the employees also work in our company they have to be they have to be they have they have to perform physically up to their smile and it is quite uh, exhaustive emotionally you drained out after few hours so uh, to recruit people in that kind of job is very costly actually and they should have certain profile and they require to know certain softwares uh, fidelio and amidos and a lot of qualifications required knowledge on that issues so what we did is one of the thing was that that person requires to speak english and not uh, a localized regional english but rather quite widely acceptable indian english you know there are we all speak english even i am talking now it's a bangu english i'm having little orientation towards my own native language so what we did is we found in india there are people those who speak english actually very well and that is goa so what we found what we did is we rather than looking into a person with full qualification hotel management degree what we did we went to villages our hr directors went to villages found all those guys those who are really ch- having challenging times but their heart is wants to excel like sarukh khan as i told you earlier so this kind of guys those who are highly ambitious but they don't have the wings to fly so he thought why not to give them wings give them little thing what they expect from us so he got them or got all those guys you understand so what he did is we trained them for one and a half years so one years and then we t- took them into our things these are the guys remember if you t- do this with ordinary people it will not going to ordinary employee or having good family background it's not going to work you require to get all those guys those who threshold is little lower so they will find that they have life has progressed by joining the aj group of hotels or something like this and they will stay with you because otherwise if i recruit i have to pay very high price so getting these guys developing them having that kind of profile having threshold uh, keeping into mind to their threshold and taking this kind of guys actually help you perhaps you require to be a little creative in your way that way we we thought is a uh, those who can speak english will qualify we train them but we require attitude so we attitude and the challenging family background 
and good English. I mean, who can speak great English? So we took them there. So perhaps in your, I don't know which industry you belong to, sir, but perhaps in your areas, that kind of people do exist. Uh, so if you, uh, I mean, that is the way I would have addressed, sir. Thank you for your time, sir. So summarizing, like, choose a person who needs so that uh, you can pay less and you can train him, but you'll have to spend on the training time and things like that. So the recruitment of higher salary does not come there. But uh, what is, if he is having the skill, yeah. he is not having the skill, uh, we, we need a skilled person. Yeah. You need find. a skilled person, then he we puts a market tag. Then he puts a market tag, then you'll have to pay. That, that is always there. That is always there. Uh, the trainer has to be taken out. Yeah. It's, it's like, uh, if we take about what Biswas is saying is, you have you're spending some tra time on training, that goes there for the salary, then it equates there again. So it's something like that. Uh, that is uh, the next question. Do you have anything? Okay. Anything from the house? One more question. Hey, Kubi say, is there any kind of mechanism by which you can uh, quantify some kind of profit that the person makes? Say, for marketing person, it's relatively easy. Because you can just, you have an NIS, you can do it easily. But for that, you can start a start that you need to quantify the kind of work or the contribution to the profit. Do you have any template for this? So something like that, we were talking about performance appraisal and things like that. He wants a quantitative result for that. For the cost center side, the kind of people, not the profit center. For the admin shag stuff. I think your uh, expectation from the employees, expectation, so it, 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 it starts from you. So what do you expect that admin staff, what are the things you expect? And expectation could be numerically uh, quantified. So, and then you can put some kind of, uh, some kind of scaling uh, around that. That is the way, but, but it starts with you. What do you expect from them? That clarity of expectation from your admin staff can actually uh, give a, uh, uh, some parameters. That parameter could be expected. For example, uh, customer complaints or um, what about the parameters you set? It should be around that. So if it is like this, so actually in a bigger organization, we do it in a balance scorecard. But I'm just telling you, I'm extracting the spirit of balance scorecard. I'm trying to tell you that, that in balance scorecard, we do not evaluate only by profit. The problem is then, the problem is actually each employee will manipulate because of their hedonistic behavior, each employee will manipulate your feedback system, your appraisal system. So to avoid that manipulation and uh, short termism, short termism meaning just their behavior will produce only recent performance, not the durable performance what you look for because you own the business. So you are looking for a durable performance over a period of time. So otherwise they will do, they will develop, they, they are located at the, uh, the work level. So they will develop a lot of shortcuts. Uh, and for example, I tell you in Haryana, uh, the problem in, uh, when I went there, it was traveling in the bus, government bus. And why? Because the bus conductor speaks very nicely with you. They sp <laughs> I hope you understood the satire I'm saying. So the problem is that bus conductor speaks very badly. So what actually happened though, so the government decided to give them training. So what is the training? At least they should use one word called please, prepare, in their words. But if you hear the way they use prepare, your blood in your body will actually burn. So the point I'm trying to say is that, <laughs> that if you are putting the right parameters, your expectation, that parameter, what do you expect? And that could be uh, translated into some numerical figures. Perhaps that could be that. But above all, I look for, again, the, I really uh, applaud uh, things what you said you have done. Because in a smaller organization, that could be uh, really uh, work well. Uh, because the so, number if you are doing, they will manipulate that. Uh, that Because they are closely located to that work and they know, uh, each one of us knows the shortcut in our work, what we do. <laughs> right. So they also develop a lot of shortcuts and that shortcuts, the cost of that shortcut will not be reflected immediately in your company's reputation and brand. It will be reflected perhaps a little later. Can I ask you points if that's Yeah. I, I can talk, I mean, we can approach this in two ways. One is the value for an employee. So, for example, the value for an employee, how we calculate is there's a methodology that, suppose if one person goes, 
out and you have to get an another person of the equal caliber immediately from a market how much you pay for that individual to fill this gap is normally the value of this person who is not going to be there the second method is if you are going to take someone who is having less caliber if you have to pay him some money bring him in and give him training and then make him equal to that person who is leaving then the cost of procuring and the cost of training have to be added that's a value that's from the value perspective then uh, from the point of how much profit can be calculated we talk of something like kra kpa and kpi and key result area key performance area and the kpi to be for example hr area if hr department is going to be the key result area the key performance area let us take as uh, you know the uh, uh, i mean industrial relations department k or a to kpi and kpi kra and kpi is subjective terms kpi is in numbers like for example last year there was three agitations by the employees and that was i mean five agitation that was handled well and this year i fix a kpi that there cannot be more than three agitations so i fix a kpi key performance indicators they perform the particular person in charge of that particular department how to effectively ensure that the uh, you know the only three agitations happen and so two agitations do not happen if two agitations are not happening that is not going to affect my productivity that's not going to affect my work and that's going to contribute to my profit so that is how we evaluate the individual so we go to the final aspects of kpi for example we can do it even for training if training is one of the department how many training five training i offer to bring somebody to that level i enable with three training experiences bring that person to that level if that is going to be the kpi if is going to save two training two training cars that's a contribute profit that has been contributed by him that's how we evaluate individually that's we capture so if there is no questions from the floor or thing of discussion i think we can wind up Thank you very much for all the panelists for having shared this session. It was really, it was really a useful session and very beneficial to all of us. We can definitely put into our day-to-day -day practice, and even for the panelists, they have got a lot to carry home also. Thank you. Thank you very much.